Thanks, Steph. You mentioned the evacuation orders for Baalbek City today in Lebanon. Uh, Baalbek is uh, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You have the um, Roman temples there. There was pictures today of smoke rising near them, not on them, but near them. Uh, I haven't seen any statements from UNESCO about the preserving, protecting them. Well, I is mean, the SG worried uh, about? Yes. I mean, clearly, uh, we do not want to see any harm done to people and also to their cultural heritage. I think one of the s things we've seen in conflicts in recent years um, is the, the destruction of cultural heritage that can never be uh, replaced. So UNESCO sites do need to be protected. And should that site be blown up, would that be a war crime? Uh, I, I can't answer that uh, with any definitive, uh, with a definitive answer, but I can tell we do not want to see any harm done to that place. Eh? And on Gaza, can we get an update on exactly what is getting in to the s people in need in the north and the central and southern parts yeah. of Gaza? I mean, a, a lot of that is available on the OCHA dashboard, but we'll try to get you an update as well. Deji, China Central Television. Thank you, Stefan Dujaric, spokesperson for the Secretary General of the United Thank Nations. Um, two questions. First, do you have any update of the oil tanker of Yemen? It's been quite a long time. I think UNDP has to have some plan, right? That's a very good question. Uh, so we'll get you an answer. Okay. Second, just moments ago, the GA just adopted a resolution called necessity of ending the economic, commercial, and financial embargo imposed by the United States of America against Cuba. Uh, this is the 32nd year that the GA adopted this resolution with only two against America and Israel. So I just want to know what's the position of the, gener uh, of the gen uh, Secretary General on this issue? Well, I mean, I, I think I answered that question yesterday, but our observation is that as you mentioned, this is not the first time this resolution has been uh, voted. Um, it has not been implemented. And uh, meanwhile, I think the, the economic and, and uh, burden on Cuba and the Cuban people continues. So will the, the Secretary General urge the USA to We urge for the... all member states to follow all resolutions. Mike. No full introduction? No, I, if, if anyone needs no full introduction, no, go ahead. I don't, I'll take that as a compliment. Yes. Uh, have there been any initial discussions at any level between the UN slash UNRWA and Israeli officials, COGAT, elsewhere, about the um, possible implementation of the laws that were passed on Monday? Uh, I mean, the, the, the communication was, as you know, the letter sent by the Secretary General yesterday uh, to the Prime Minister of, um, of Israel. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, there's been no official contact, uh, despite efforts from between UNRWA and uh, the Israeli government, their counterpart, which is the foreign uh, ministry. There remains operational contacts on a, on a daily basis, of course. Um, but you know, our our position is that we do not we do not want to see this law uh, implemented. We hope it does not get implemented because if it does, it will have devastating consequences. And it is clear for us that there is no um, there is no uh, replacement uh, for UNRWA. And I would say that we were very hardened to uh, read. Uh, the message, the press, uh, re the press statement issued by the Security Council on that uh, earlier today. Uh, even within the operational, I mean, this is an operational issue, uh, in addition to a legal issue. Uh, even at the I, operational I mean, uh, level, listen on, on there... the, the uh, operational issue. If if UNRWA has to close its health centers, its uh, its schools, its um, nutrition program, all of that, it's the what will happen as warranted under international law is that Israel will then have to take responsibility for delivering these services uh, to the people in areas under which they have authority. Uh, follow up to that. Uh, the letter from the Secretary General to the Prime Minister included a suggestion, a veiled threat, I don't know what you want to call it, that uh, the case could be taken to the International Court of Justice. Is, is there a timeline? No, it's not, it's not a veiled threat. It's a 
it, it's just <clears throat> it's a statement of fact that in a lot in a lot in a number of legal instruments uh, and the, the ones on I think this is, refers to privileges and immunities uh, if there is a disagreement between the parties then there is a a mechanism uh, to try to resolve that uh, disagreement and this one goes through the International Court of Justice so what's the timeline on that do you wait well, first until of all the, laws the, are the, the, the law has not been implemented so Michelle and then I think we have to get our guests just just a quick follow-up on that the law will bar UNRWA from operating in Israel uh, yeah so does the UN believe that it can continue to try and operate in Gaza and the West Bank? No, listen, it, it, it is under Israel and also areas in which Israel uh, controls. They will, if the law is fully implemented, UNRWA will not be able to operate in Gaza or the occupied West Bank. And I guess no response from the Israeli Prime Minister to the law? Not to my knowledge. Goodbye, people.